What I want to talk about is only just two practical ways to reach out. Two practical ways to reach out. That is my message for this morning. Two practical ways for reach out. Number one is prayer evangelism. Number two is personal testimony. Prayer evangelism and personal testimony. Let me explain number one, prayer evangelism. What is prayer evangelism all about? It's exactly what you were doing yesterday. Hallelujah. As I was passing uh, one of your stations, was it a prayer what? There was a prayer station, meaning I've seen with others, they call it, uh, you know, today we talk about drive through in restaurants and so on. Others will call it prayer drive through Even when you are driving, we pray for you. When you are passing, we pray for you. Now, prayer evangelism in simple terms is talking to God about your neighbors, other people, before you talk to them about God. In other words, you present them before God before you present God to them. And it's something that I want us to learn this morning that we are missing a lot from. Where we present our neighbors, we present our family members, we present our colleagues, we present our superiors even at work to God before we present God to them. I want us to read the scripture in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter number 2, verse to verse number 3. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 3. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For all, all people. Hallelujah. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all people. And all people is all people. Hallelujah. Even those who are giving you a tough time. That's why when Jesus was teaching in the book of Matthew chapter number 5, he says the way to respond to those who give you tough time is to pray for them. Then he went further and said, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God. Verse number 4, who desires all men to be saved? and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let me just explain this to you in practical terms. Hallelujah. When we talk about praying for all men, it's not about praying for them in your own closet. Yes, you can pray for them in your own closet, but it makes a big difference when you pray with them. Just want to share with you a personal story. When this scripture was revealed to me, I think six years ago, I shared this in the church WhatsApp group in the morning to say, I am encouraging you, saints, go and pray with your superiors and so on. Guess what? I was flying to East London and I was in the business class. Next to me, on the opposite side, was the president of the company. That scripture came back. I went to him and I greeted him. I introduced myself and so on, but went back to my seat. Then at that time, I think Santa Nene was still the minister of finance. Then he, Santa Nene moved to go and sit with the president and the bodyguard of the president moved. I was not settled. 
I was burning inside my spirit to say, you shared this in the morning. Now it's time for you to do it. I could not resist. I stood up and went to them and said, can I pray? And let, let me tell you something. People need prayer. People are going through things in this life. And they never hesitated. They said, it's okay. Then I said, let's hold hands. They brought their hands. And the three of us held hands. And I prayed with them. And afterwards, they said, thank you so much, Pastor. And I felt so relieved. What this scripture is saying is that use every opportunity available to pray with all men. Walk into your CEO's office even when you are a cleaner because the rank that you have at your workplace is not the same rank that you have spiritually. You may be an administrator at work, but your spiritual rank is higher than the person that you are reporting to. Walk into that office and people wonder, how dare you go to the boss office and you say, I'm here for nothing else, sir. I'm just here to pray with you. What usually works is, then ask them, is there anything that I can pray about? Because when they mention something and you pray about that and God answers, they know it was because of that prayer. That is what it means. All, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. And this you can do anywhere. I once prayed at Nando's drive through That just short time when you are ordering. I asked the girl who was helping me, can I pray with you? She says, yes, sir. I said, what do I pray for? She started crying. And she said, sir, I just need a permanent job. This job is temporary. Although I have not seen her afterwards, but I prayed and I released favor upon her life for a permanent job. And I believe she got that job. And when she gets the job, she can only think of God. Hallelujah. That is prayer evangelism. You talk to God about people before you talk to them about God. Hallelujah. At the petrol filling station, that petrol attendant, when you are having lunch at a restaurant, don't pray for your food without the waiter. Talking practical things here. That waiter who comes to save you, when they put the food in front of you, say, can you join us for prayer? Then you ask them, is there anything we can pray for you for? And you will be amazed by the things that people will pour to you. And I tell you, you may not say anything to them, about the gospel at that time, but you have sown a seed. Next time you go to that restaurant, don't be surprised when that person, even if you don't know them, they rush to you and say, I want to tell you something. You remember that day you prayed for me about one, two, three? Here is a testimony. And that becomes a platform for you to say, the kingdom of God has come. You want us to look at the book of Luke? Chapter number 10, verse number 5 to verse number 9. This is basically simple steps of prayer evangelism. I've already touched on this. Luke 10, 5 to 9. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, 
your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. Verse number seven. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. I want you to notice something from this scripture. Kingdom of God has come to you, come at the end, not in the beginning. The first thing in verse number five, you declare peace to the house. You bless the house. Hallelujah. You declare peace. Number two, you remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they give you. That talks to fellowship with people. If there is one thing that our Lord Jesus Christ was criticized for, he spent more time with the sinners. He even said, it's the sick who need a doctor, not the health. Learn to fellowship with people. Spend time with people. In the same house, eating and drinking whatever they bring before you. Number three. So number one is bless them, declare peace. Number two, fellowship. Number three, heal the sick. That talks to minister to their needs. People have got needs. Find out from them what needs they have. I want to share with you a practical story again of our youth in 2018 June. They spent 16th of June doing prayer evangelism in a village called Ramutz and next to Haman's Kral. And they came to a family. Because we always say, ask the family, is there anything we can pray for? That family said, we just need a two-roomed house. They were staying in a Zozo. The youth came back to church the following day and reported to us that there is this family that we met and they just want a two-roomed house. We decided as the church to take up that project. And ultimately, we built that family. From June, we handed over a three-roomed house on the 26th of November, 2018. And we handed over that house with a ceiling, tiles, furniture, kitchen units, microwave, stove, fridge, and a grocery for three months. Two things touched me on that day because we went to do our Sunday service there at the house as we were handing over the property. Two things that touched me. One, on that day I learned that the floor in the Zozo, there was nothing underneath that floor. Those are the conditions that this family was living in. Number two, what really cut my heart is that this family used to go to church, but the daughter was getting married and somebody from church ridiculed her to say, you getting married while you don't even have a proper house at home? And that made that family to leave church. But... Without us knowing, I mean, we never knew this family. We never had a relationship with them. But through prayer evangelism, I can tell you that family is back in the house of God. When you minister to people's needs, and it's not about material things. Where it is possible, it is possible. But does that prayer for somebody who is sick? Somebody who is looking for a job, that prayer that will open doors for that person, they will never forget that it is because of that prayer. Then the last part is now you can declare the kingdom of God has come. It is easy to declare the kingdom of God has come near you when they have experienced God for themselves. That is prayer evangelism. Let's move to the next one as I complete. Personal testimony. What does you look at two case studies? Wow, this one, my God. Personal testimony. Is there anything here that the Lord has not done anything for you? 
fullness when he was praying. He was praying 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 18 and verse number 19. That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And he has given you and me a ministry of reconciliation. Meaning all of us are ministers. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 11 and verse number 12, especially verse number 12. The pastors, evangelists, and so on are there to equip the saints for the work of ministry. But unfortunately today, they are the ones who do the work of ministry while we are sleeping. Whereas we are equipped to do the work of ministry. I always say, have you ever seen a shepherd pregnant? See sheep pregnant. <laughs> who gives birth? Sheep or the shepherd? Sheep are the ones who produce, not the shepherd. The shepherd feeds and takes care of the sheep, equipping the sheep. Hallelujah. Now, something very simple that we fail to do, which I want us to learn from these two case studies. First case study is the Samaritan woman. In the book of John chapter number four, we were quoting this scripture last night as well. We all know this woman, hallelujah, a woman who was well known in the city because there were few men that she had been with in her life, five in number, and the sixth one was also not hers, her husband. But something about this woman is that after she had an encounter with Jesus, and we are reading verse number 28 to verse number 30, and verse number 39 to verse number 42. After she had an encounter with Jesus, the woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to, to the man, she went to the man, she was used to the man anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> she said to the man, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Her message this time about was different. Hallelujah. Although she went to the man, her message was different because of the encounter she had with Jesus. She said, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. I want to ask you a question. Did she open a scripture? Did she have to worry about exegesis? Like you were saying about the variants. That's why they came with five. Because trying to explain the scripture. This woman had a very simple message. Come see a man who told that I ever did. That was her message. And I want to ask you a question. Can that be your message as well? Nothing complicated, very simple. Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Come have an encounter with the man who changed my life? Verse number 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him first because of the word of the woman who testified me all that I ever did. Listen to this. Many of the Samaritans believed because of the word of this woman. And beloved, we are talking about a woman who had issues before she had an encounter with Jesus. But she had a simple message in that city and many believed. He told me all that I ever. Verse number 40. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them and stayed there two days. Verse 41, and many more believed because of his 
own way. And they said to the woman, I love this part. Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. These people were saying, yes, we heard you and believed, but now we don't believe because of what you said, but we are believing because now we have heard him ourselves. Was this complicated? No, no. But do you know that we really fail on this one? How many of us, if I were to ask you, if you have got flyers, we had a conference, isn't it? How many of us shared those flyers with at least one person? How many of us invite our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues to our church meetings? You don't have to preach to them. You just have to say, you know, there is a church I go to. There is God in that church. And I just want you to come and experience this God at the church where I go to. And bring this person here. And let they themselves have an encounter with God and come back to you and say, you know, you told me and I have had my own experience. You don't have to say much to them, your colleagues, your friends. How many of us, beloved, I said earlier, we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. How many of us are ministers? How many of us are ambassadors of Christ? And it's nothing complicated. Just invite somebody. Hallelujah. Especially when you have got flyers, you have got events, you are going to be having prayer and fasting this coming week. Will you invite somebody to one of the meetings to come with you? So that they can have an encounter with God. Simple testimony about what the Lord has done for. Let's go to the second case study. That is the man of Gadara. Let's read from the book of Luke chapter number 8. Allow me to read from verse number 38. We know the story, but I want us to look at the last part of it. This man, you can call him one of those men that according to society was useless. He lived in the tombs. Naked, cutting himself with stones. And I came to understand why when Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side, then when they were in the lake, there was a storm. That storm, it was because when Jesus crossed to the other side, when you read the scriptures, you realize there is nothing else he did on the other side than to deliver this evangelist, to go and evangelize. After that, he went back. This was an evangelist who was in the tombs, because that is exactly what he was. He was psychotic, and Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side. Can I say to you, the spiritual realm respond to whatever we do. The lake is known to be quiet. There are no waves in the lake. It's calm waters. But when you bring the wind, then you start to have waves and the storm. So the storm that they were experiencing was a mixture of water and the wind. Because the evil spirits on the other side knew that, ha, ah, we are in trouble. They are coming this side. Let's cause trouble here in the lake. Now, when you are crossing to the other side, storms will come. Don't be discouraged by the storms. I don't know why I have to tell you this. Sometimes when you are doing the work of God, you will have personal problems because of the big vision that you are carrying. But when that comes your way, just know it's just a storm. It's just a storm. Continue 
to cross to the other side. Because there is an evangelist that is waiting to be delivered today and the next day. Verse number 38. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. The man who was known in the city to say, that one, possibly they gave him a name. <laughs> Am I <trying? laughs> In my language, it's, he was known for that. But this man, after he was delivered, the Bible says, he went his way. What was he doing as he went his way? He was proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. I want to ask you a question. What is it that Jesus has done for you? And I can guarantee all of us here, there is something that the Lord has done for you. But are you crazy about that? Have you been all over the city proclaiming the great things that the Lord has done for you? Or it has become a personal thing that you have kept to yourself and no one knows about it. I want to read the last scripture and we are going to pray. John chapter number 4, verse number 31 to verse number 38. Back again to the story of the Samaritan woman. But this time about, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And I just want to give us this word. Because, beloved, Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse number 29, the time is short. In other versions it says, the time has been shortened. To a point where those with wives should live like they have none. And those with possessions should live like they don't have possessions. And those who have the things or uses the things of this world should live like as if they do not exist. The time is. And while we think we still have time. While we think it is not yet the season. This is the time. Jesus is coming back. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus to have a meal, saying, Rabbi, teacher, eat. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? But he told them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish his work. Do you not say it is still four months until the harvest comes? Look, I say to you, raise your eyes and look at the fields and see they are white for harvest. I want to repeat this one. Do you not say it is four months until the harvest comes? Look, I say to you, raise your eyes and look at the fields and see they are white for harvest. Already the reaper is receiving his wages and he is gathering fruit for eternal life so that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case, the saying is true. One person sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap a crop for which you have not worked. Others have worked and you have been privileged to reap the results of their work. I want to conclude by saying, as we all stand up on our feet, let's all stand up on our feet. The Lord is saying, 
you are still saying, it is still four months until the harvest comes. But I want you to raise up your eyes and look at the field and see. They are white for harvest. The harvest is ready. He who calls on the name of the Lord shall be. And Paul continues and say, How shall they call on whom that they have not heard? How shall they hear unless there is a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And we have been sent. The Lord said, Lo, I am with you until the end of the world. And I want to say to us, beloved, it is for all of us. Winning souls is not for certain individuals. Winning souls is not, not about events. It's something that should become a lifestyle that we adopt. Anywhere, wherever we are, God has placed us in different places. Whether you are still a learner at primary or secondary school, whether you are a tertiary institution, whether you are in the working world, opportunities are always there. The harvest is ready. The question is, are you ready to do the simple thing that we have learned today? Just speak to somebody. Pray to God about somebody and pray with them. Declare to them that the kingdom of God has come alive. Testify about the things that God is doing in your life. Are you ready to do that? I just want us to receive this word with thanksgiving this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ.